Hello, welcome to this short video about OSLC in the DAWs Next Generation environment. In my previous video, I introduced the concepts of OSLC from a non-specific tool perspective. This video will show you what OSLC looks like in DAWs. I don't have any affiliation with IBM. I just believe that the best way to understand something is to get your hands dirty by actually using it. And DAWs Next Generation has OSLC capability built in out of the box. You can download yourself a free evaluation copy from jazz.net. This video is aimed at somebody who is looking to build an OSLC consumer application and wants to know the steps involved to interact with a tool that has the OSLC services. You're going to see what services are available as well as how to query, create, update and delete resources. All of the things that I show you in this video should be repeatable with Doors Next Generation out of the box. Typically, you would use OSLC to build interoperability between two tools. So that you can see what's going on behind the scenes, I'm going to interact with DAWs using a RESTful client. There are many RESTful clients out there, but I'm going to use Google Chrome's Advanced REST client. I'm going to send and receive HTTP commands so that you can see what's going on behind the scenes. It won't look very user-friendly, but remember, in a complete integration, no human would ever see any of this. All of the steps done here would be done programmatically. Okay, so once you've set up Jazz Team Server, you will see a dashboard which looks something like this. A lot of the tools for Jazz look very similar. This is the Jazz Team Server page, and I know that because it has JTS up here. If I want to go to Doors or Requirements Management as it's known inside Jazz, I come down to Requirements Management and you can pick one of your projects. This is the, the C2 Control Room is one of the example projects I've set up for this video. So this is the dashboard to Doors. I won't go into the user interface too much because that's not the purpose of this video, but if I just want to see my artifacts, my requirements, I click up to here, I go to Browse Artifacts and I will see a folder breakdown. If I click on this folder, I will see some requirements in here with some data, so who modified them, who, uh, what type they are, and a brief description. But where is OSLC? So this is the advanced REST client. This is going to be our gateway into the OSLC services for those next generation. In the box at the top, this is where you put the URLs that you're going to do your requests on. This is the base URL that you would access the Jazz Team server with, with slash RM on the end for requirements management. And to access the root services, you just add on to the end the word root services. Very simple. Note, the root services is an IBM invention. You won't find this in the OSLC specification. Make sure that your request type is sent to a GET and put two headers in. One OSLC core version set that to two and one accept header set to application slash RDF plus XML. Once you're done, you can press send and you will get back all of the root services information available to you. Note, there's a lot of information here, but you're not concerned with most of it. The only two areas of interest are these OAuth URLs here, which you need if you're going to implement OAuthentication. We're not, so ignore them. And the catalog, which is down here. So I'm just going to do a quick search. Here it is. And there's my catalog. Copy. And I'm just going to paste this back into the top. I'm going to do another get, and here I get a list of all of my service providers available to me through doors. Note, a service provider does not equal a tool, a service provider equals a project. And if I go to my project list in doors, you will see them here, C2 Control Room, Fuel Management System UK, and Ian's Test Projects, and I can see them here. I'm interested in the C2 Control Room, so I'm just going to take a copy of the services.xml for this. When I do a get on that, I will see a list available to me of all of the services available to me in this particular project. So now I'm inside the service provider and here lists all of the services available to me. Let's start by having a look at the delegated user interfaces. I'm just going to do a quick search for selection dialog. And here it is. Note, you'll have a selection dialog for each type of resource you have in your OSLC provider. And there are two indoors, one for requirements and one for requirement collection. We are interested in the requirements. 
selection dialog so I'm just gonna copy that URL and put that into my browser but before I can send that off I need to be aware that I have to add a bit of text on the end hash OSLC dash code dash dash post message dash one I don't know why they didn't put that in the service provider but they didn't so I just need to go and put that onto the end if you don't it won't work I will just paste that onto and then I shall do a enter and this will give me my delegated user interface so now I have a nice user interface where I can see all my folders I can click on them and I can see if I've got any requirements inside not so many uh, this one has the most and the beauty of this is that I didn't have to write any code to make this available to my end user my end user didn't have to develop any boxes or buttons this was just provided out of the box and gives the user the ability to browse resources The other type of delegated UI I have is the creation dialog. So if I just do a quick search for creation dialog, I can look to create a requirement. So same again, I take my URL, just going to do a copy. I will put that into the URL, but before I can go, I have to paste that bit of text onto the end. Paste, press enter and I will get now a delegated UI that will allow me to create a requirement. So let's just make a test bit of data. Uh, I'll put that in the C2 control room folder. I could put it in a different folder if I like. Let's put that in add cost requirements. Click OK. Click OK. The artifact has been created. I can test this. If I go into doors and I click on add costs, requirements I can see my new requirements which is down here Ian underscore rec of course you realize that the user interface given to you through the delegated UI will be limited to how IBM have defined it if you want to create your own user interface there's nothing stopping you with the OSLC services given to you let's have a look at the query capabilities given to us in OSLC so if I just do a quick search for query, I will see them here. So there's one called query capability and one called folder query capability. Each one has a base URI that you can use to create your own queries. If I just take the base URI here and copy that, and I do a get on the base URI and don't add anything to it, I will get a list of every single requirement that exists inside my project. So the results of the query don't give me anything more than the number of results provided and a list of all the URIs for each requirement. If I go ahead and just take one of these requirements, I will copy and paste. It will give me back all of the information inside that requirement. Here I've got some descriptive text. I can see who created it. I can see the date it was created. And I can also see the URL of the folder. Uh, here it is, parent. So if I did a get on that, I would get more information about that folder. Let's go and take a look at the qu other query, which is for folders. So the query capability for folders is here. So I'm just going to take a copy of that. And I will do a paste and a get. And this will give me the folders at the top level. So note the difference between the requirement query base and the folder query base is that the folder queries are hierarchical. So if I want to have a look at the subfolders, I can go to the subfolder tag, take a copy, paste that in, and I will see the folders that exist inside. Note, I'm not going to see any requirements here. If I want to see which requirements are stored in a folder, I have to do a query. If you do a web search on OSLC queries, you'll come by plenty of examples. But to get you started, let's make one now. I'll show you a query which returns all of the requirements inside a particular folder, since that is quite useful to know. The breakdown of the query is the base query URI, followed by some prefix text, followed by the URI of the folder you want to look inside, followed by a closing bracket. So let's make the query. 
Let's go back to the services list and get the URI for the query base. Here it is. I'll assemble this in Notepad++ so you can see. So there's the query base URI, followed by the prefix text. Here we need to put the URI of a folder that we want to look inside. So we can get the folder URI from the folder query. So if I copy that and do a get, let's say we want to look inside the uh, RTP requirements. So if I get the URI of the folder, copy that, put that into my query, followed by a closing bracket. If I do a get on that now, or copy rather, paste that into my browser, this should give me all of the requirements that exist inside that folder. And there are two. I've got one here and one here.